Design engineering is a practice that merges together design practices and engineering practices. For me, design engineering means um, to try to understand uh, different ways of seeing a problem, for example, and bringing in different knowledge from different fields. What projects should be done and like how should, what problems deserve being worked on. And make real world change rather than just designing things that might work in theory or passing them on to someone else that might be able to take what you've designed and actually innovate and bring that to the life. The way that I got into design engineering, I actually studied computer science in school. But the whole time I was in college, I was doing graphic design, I picked up photography, I was filming, I just did a lot of like things that I might call like design from an art perspective. Uh, I got into design engineering because I tackled a lot of big issues in my artwork and in my design practice, but lacked the actual hard skills to bring those sorts of things to life and be able to make real world change for people. I'm Louisa. Uh, I'm a multidisciplinary designer. I'm Louisa. I am a first year student on global innovation design. My name is Kevin Lee. I'm a first year global innovation design student at the Royal College of Art and Imperial College London. And this past term, we worked on a co-design project in Southern Thailand. The way we ended up in Thailand, actually, we were doing a, an exchange semester as part of our program in Tokyo and Beijing. But because of the pandemic, Japan and China never issued our student visas. So we all decided we didn't just want to do online design school. And we traveled together, taking the necessary precautions, getting the visa, etc., to Thailand. And we ended up getting, on, getting to the southern part of Thailand for a long while, in or really close to Krabi. And the whole time, like classes were still online, and we decided, we felt like, let's get to know the people around us. Like, the place we're in, the culture, we're on an exchange semester. Let's learn, like, let's do some exchanging. So we decided one of the best ways to get to know the local area would be to do a co-design project with some local people. Co-design is a type of design project in which the people who are going to use whatever the final design outcome are equal collaborators in the design process as the designers themselves. So it's a collaboration between everyone. The beginning of this project was actually completely a chance encounter. We were doing our normal shopping and we came across Steve, who was really, really friendly and spoke really amazing English. So Steve introduced us to a few of his friends. He told us a lot about different problems that were faced in the area and different places that he thought could use some creative problem solving skills. Um, he introduced us to his friend Bang, who is a farmer and a fisherman. Most of the, the villager in, in this uh, district, they are uh, working about uh, agriculture. Most of them agriculture, so they have a rubber tree, palm tree, or like a, they plant to grow the, the tree like this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mostly farmers. Mostly, yeah. Uh -huh. And you, you yourself are a farmer? Yes, well. of course. So do you farm rubber? Rubber and palm tree. We can bring you anytime you want to go to see. But uh, we have to get up er earlier than this. Because About they do in the very early morning. Uh, yes. Uh -huh. Because the when, the, when the weather is not too hot, the rubber tree, the rubber come, come out to very good. Yeah. Uh, this one. About uh, 4 a.m. or 5 a.m. Oh. Like this. Uh -huh. Yeah, that, that is really early. Uh, yeah. Yes. <laughs> they do it every day. Because yeah. every day you go. Uh, yes. Yeah. Because like this, in the morning or oh no, after uh, midnight to uh, 5 a.m., we can peeling the, uh, the rubber tree. Uh -huh. Any design engineering process starts with having to understand what is the actual problem at hand? What are you designing for? Listening to the users and understanding from them what they consider the main issues to be and understanding from them what they consider themselves to need in whatever scenario. So 
the place we started was to do some proper need finding, was to go to the farm, speak to the farmers and try it out ourselves and try and really understand the processes that they go through. Even she cut now and then she don't know, maybe the next two hours raining. Mm. The, uh, our life is depend on the, the raining. Yeah. It's, yeah. It will be affect both um, good and bad things. Mm -hmm. uh, like uh, once we uh, do the uh, rubber, yeah. rubber uh, uh, plantations, mm -hmm. we don't need much rain because when we cut the rubber and then let the uh, rubber go out, mm -hmm. it cannot mix with rain or water. Okay. Yeah. yeah. If yeah. the rain, if the rain raining, right? The rubber will gone. Yeah. Because the rain mixed with the rubber. We also cannot yeah. do. So we <laughs> what we do about palm and tree, uh, palm and rubber, we do it like our ancestors do it 100 years ago. Yeah. What they do now, we do like this. Same. Uh, same. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh, but sometimes I also thinking that we have to prove like if raining, we have to build a roof or anything to protect that one. But Bang had a rubber farm where he was experiencing like a common problem with rain because it rains a lot down there and it ruins the latex when it rains. Um, and it was really interesting learning about like the complicated kind of push and pull that was going down there. Um, like they need rain for the palm farms, but rain ruins latex. Once you really have a good understanding of what the problem is, that's when you start designing. So you'll do some sketches, you'll do a lot of brainstorming, you'll do market research and try and see, has anyone faced this problem before and has anyone come up with a solution to this? And then once you've gathered that all together and you've got a general of idea of what sorts of things might work, it's really important to start prototyping early on. So gathering materials, anything you can find, anything you can buy, anything you can easily get your hands on and just start making things and put it in the context it's going to exist in and testing things out and seeing what things work and what things don't. We did a lot of research, uh, what's already existing, what's been done and then trying to adjust it to the situation we were facing because each situation can be slightly um, different for Bang, it was very important to cut costs, for example, so it was an alternative for him to buy existing rain gear um, on the markets. So we then looked at what is around us, what is affordable for him, um, materials we could use to put together something, and we found um, waste material as rice bags and straps, as well as natural materials as leaves and uh, branches. A really important part of a design engineering process is collaboration. Everyone who comes into design engineering tends to have a completely different background and we all bring different skills and perspectives to the table. So it's really important to sit down, discuss what you've made, discuss what's good about it, what's bad about it, what you need to change and look at different people's perspectives and use your previous skills to try and become try and come up with something different so that we could bring a new iteration to the farm and get closer and closer to the perfect solution to the problem that we were trying to solve. So we did some research and we were looking at and there's other rubber trees that use shades uh. to stop the water from getting into the rubber. So we were looking at these but there's a lot of um, issue with the cost mm -hmm. like the price per tree like yeah, how much would you want to everyone can touch uh, how yeah. like if you had to buy one per tree how much would you want to spend per tree on that sort of thing oh, um, not more than 25 bar. yeah yeah mm -hmm. okay mm -hmm. so we've made you a couple of prototypes so we tried to use only materials that you would easily be able to find mm -hmm. um, and something that you would easily be able to make yourself mm -hmm. So we've got the ends of the palm fronds. We sewed some of these together. Mm -hmm. um, and we've also got rice bags uh, and we've got some ties. So all of this we just found. Mm -hmm. 
One of them was made out of the rice bags because um, we noticed that they were like really common. They were catching durian fruit off of the tree using rice bags. Um, and the other one was made with the palm fronds that we dried from the place we were living at. Uh, and they both kind of formed like a canopy that would come off the, tr like it would cover the, the rubber bowl and the leaf of the palm frond would be kind of the, the awning, the canopy. And the rice bag one, we used the palm fronds actually just to support the rice bag and we tied the rice bag um, and used that as a covering. We tested it overnight, asked them how they felt about it, what worked, what didn't work, and went back, uh, redid some prototypes, developed a bit. I am cutting the other side of the palm leaf that you were just cutting. Mm -hmm. along. I think you are really using your creativity. So we're gonna go this way. Um, and I would say this is a very typical design engineering process where it's, it's this back and forth and understanding the actual problem you're facing uh, as an individual case. So the natural one, the one that was made out of the palm fronds, we added a basket weave. Um, and the one using the rice bag, we added an additional palm frond as support in the middle where the rice bag was sagging a little bit. Um, and we noticed that water was kind of flowing down that part. And both of them got an update as well. Luisa had the idea to uh, take the raw latex and try to use it as a sealant between the things we'd have fixed to the tree and the tree itself so that water wouldn't get in like behind the covering that we had put down. People that already retired, 60 years old up, uh, they are going to do the activity that they are using this palm also oh, really? to uh, like uh, doing a basket, a bag and a hat that they can do. Is it waterproof the baskets they make? Yes, of course. Mm. Mm. I also asked my mom that what, uh, when they will uh, get the group also, I asked to do this. Uh -huh. mm. oh, okay. But when, when they do, they put uh, what they say, the resin that when, when it dry, right, uh -huh. the, the water cannot go through. One of my favourite things about this project was that the final design outcome came equally from us as the design engineers and Stephen Bang, who had all of the knowledge about the type of materials they had around, the kind of processes you tend to use and the problem at hand. It's encouraged me to find out whether we need to put some sort of innovation or uh, finding to, uh, some idea to really get uh, rid of the problems. Oh. Yeah. If uh, I have uh, something like a uh, good idea, maybe I can help them a lot as well. You see, at the farm, there is no one that doing like this. Because it is the, the good of the beginning that we can find a way that you see, right? This is the material that you are using that we can find anywhere. Because there are a lot around here. So this one, if like uh, if we do like this, like, um, I asked my colleague that there is any problem when they're cutting the tree or doing their job. They said, no, not the problem. And then you see, it, even the wind, very strong, right? But not this one, uh, not blow away, right? Yeah. Uh, for me, that, uh, that you you coming here, right? That's very good because uh, you see that, as I told you before, 100 years ago, what we do now, we still do it. And then when you come here, you change, you change also, change my mind also, that, okay, if we do like this, okay, we can protect our tree and we can do the, the work that we can get more rubber. So the final idea became a mixture of things that we had tried out and things that we had proved were mostly working. And from Bang's knowledge of traditional weaving processes, and the local community who make traditional woven tie hats. And it became this combination of these two things. And they weren't complete or fully functional, but it made Bang see the potential to develop it further. It really ended up being a collaboration. And what we ended up with was, um, yeah, what we ended up putting on the trees, but also 
Bang had his own ideas about how he might source those materials, who might be involved. Um, he was excited about involving the community and um, that felt really successful to me. Like I was, I was kind of really surprised by how well it went and that felt really good. Like it was my first experience working in co-design and I can definitely see why this is a direction people want to push projects in.